Hello, I'm Enter Elysium and welcome to World War K. We've uh, managed to make an uh, alliance with the, uh, the Styx Corporation. And so we're going to make a joint space fleet. What this means is we'll have like battleships and cruisers and escorts and all this jazz. And uh, we'll be able to actually control the space around the planet. Which means we can then, you know, move reinforcements around, etc, etc. We're basically in punity. Um, and then, you know, we want to take advantage of the space resources, because, of course, our lands are a bit resource-starved. Now, first of all, what this means, most importantly, is we need somewhere to, like, dock and refuel, and basically act as a laboratory and observation post. So, we need to make a military space station. Now, of course, the first thing you really have to build is the big heavy thing that's going to basically everything else is going to dock to. So, this is going to be a bit boring, but it's going to be... A living bit and a bit that's got like fuel, some RCS, pretty much, pretty much nothing, nothing special, just a standard core really. Put some ladders on it because you know, why not? Ladders, they look awesome. There we go, a little bit of living quarters. So you know, several uh, Kerbals can now live there. And I skipped a bit about getting into orbit, my footage disappeared. Anyway, moving swiftly on, get rid of that, we don't need that. We're in a 100 kilometer orbit now, so not particularly low, not particularly high. Well, it's fairly low, but it's not low, low. Getting low, getting... Anyway, um, so yeah, now, just moving on, let's put a shielded docking port on. Why? Why shielded docking port? Well, because we can. Now, actually weighs more. So anyway, let's just put our turret on first. This is going to be a Gatling cannon, a dual Gatling cannon turret. Yes. We're going to have dual Gatling cannons attached to a rotating and elevating and tipping turret. And uh, and I have a little external camera mod, so we'll put an external camera on. And we'll be able to like shoot down anyone that tries to attack the station. It'll be amazing. Um, and also, if we chuck a probe car on the back, we can then select the probe car core as control from. And then using the nav ball, we can aim at targets. Because the nav ball, like, we, we target someone and then we can point the probe in the direction because the probes are lined to the gun barrels. So when we point at something, we'll be able to see it on the nav ball, in addition to, you you know, using visual sight. As opposed to, you know, hearing a sight, because that's the thing. Anyway, moving swiftly on. We'll cover it in that, just so it's got a little bit of protection. This does make getting to the probe core a little bit difficult to click on, but it'll be fine. Hopefully. Uh, anyway. So yeah, just play around with these. And we need some SAS, of course, because SAS, since the update, is awesome! Multiple SAS, SAS moving quite nicely, SAS controlling and pushing and tipping and all that really, that nice jazz. It really, it really helps. I really love the new changes to the SAS. And put a normal docking port on there, because it's lighter and because it's not facing upwards. So, now just get this into orbit. So a small little, a small little, yeah it's a bit superfluous. Just basically a little fuel tank, a little engine, just so we can actually, once it's roughly in the same area, push it around. It's already got some RCS on it, which is great. And then let's just stick a load of orange tanks on. We're not going to do any sort of subtlety, we're basically going to brute force it to orbit. Attach them all together. No idea what I was attaching there. And do we use skipper or we can't really use that? I think it's the skipper probably will end up with. Yeah, skippers. Non non skippers. I like them. I don't know why I like them particularly much. I think it's just because they're new and, and they look kind of nice. Anyway, moving swiftly on. This is basically going to be the main defense of the base, but we're also going to have a couple of other defenses. Uh, which, you know, I'll mention them when we get to them. But this turret, dual Gatling cannons, the Gatling cannons are pretty effective, so we shouldn't have any real problems. We have seen them spontaneously explode, I think it's when they get too hot maybe, if you continue to fire them. Uh, so we just got to be a bit careful of that. But other than that, they're pretty damn effective. So, you know, we should be fine in theory. I say in theory because... Sometimes things happen. I never expected Gatling guns to explode. Apparently they do. Now you can see I've mistimed the uh, the orbital launch there. We're going to be way far ahead from our target. You can see our, our actual station core back behind us. 
And because we can, I decided to use MechJub just to see if actually MechJub does a decent job because a lot of the time you trust it to do these sort of things and it does a half-hearted job or it uses a lot of fuel. And you can see here, it takes us quite a long way out. It didn't really need to take us out to this orbit. I think this is a 200 kilometer orbit we're now in. It's a bit unnecessary. Uh, we didn't need to go into several orbits um, and, and several several orbits before we get to the position. It was just behind us, so we could have just pulled up a tiny, tiny amount and uh, it would have fell in. But, you know, we have the fuel in the substage. I'm not worried. I was just really testing out to see if MechJiv is actually any good at this now. So there we go. Got rid of the rest. Flip over. And there we go. You can see our, our pretty little thing. I have, of course, added a satellite uh, antenna and a high-powered lamp thing beam uh, floodlight thing. Anyway, uh, yeah, onto the... Oh, oh crap. Uh, having that normal button point just point to normal is kind of useful. There we go. I've got rid of the uh, the fuel tank there. But yeah, we've added the, the floodlight and the uh, the satellite dish to the top of the turret because why not? It seems like a good place, isn't it? And we're finally attached. That took an annoyingly long time. Now, for the last part we'll be putting as part of the core military aspect of the space station. We're going to build a fighter bay and we're going to load it up with a couple of drone fighters. I think three drone fighters since we've got like the symmetry is going to make it easier. So we'll put three drone fighters in, each of which will be armed with missiles. And these drone fighters, well why are we going with drone fighters? Partly because they weigh less. The only disadvantage to not having a drone, to actually having like an actual cockpit fighter is that the cockpits provide a lot more torque, so they're a lot better. They've basically got inbuilt SAS, it's really effective. Um, but they weigh more, we can get more cross range, we can get better fuel efficiency, which is the more cross range, so I'm repeating myself. Higher accelerations and stuff with the probe core, so just use some probe core fighters. Also means that we don't need like a load of people on the space station. It's kind of unnecessary. We're using two side-mounted nuclear engines here. I'm a bit iffy about whether I use the side-mounted nuclear engines here because they actually have quite a lot of weight. I think each one weighs about a ton. They are nuclear, so they've got a great specific impulse. Uh, their fuel efficiency is ridiculous, um, but they weigh so much they really counteract a lot of what they're doing uh, in improving fuel efficiency because we need so much extra fuel to actually move them around. Each one's armed with 10 missiles. Uh, once it's out of missiles, it can't be replaced, so we just replace the entire unit, so we put a new fighter on board. Um, but the fighter, when it's out of missiles, can actually be quite a useful missile itself. It can basically act as a ramming torpedo, which I'm perfectly fine with. And there we go, using Dam Robotics, well, Infernal Robotics, Port of Dam Robotics, or whatever it is now. Fork, that's the word, fork. Um, we've got an actual bay door that opens. It'd be amazing. They go and then they'll launch. You can see the little curves in the background are waving and things moving around. Anyway, this probably weighs quite a bit, so to get this into orbit, we're going to need to brute force this. With even more brute force. So why not? One orange tank is not enough. There we go. Five orange tanks. Five orange tanks should be a, a good, a suitable number. We've of course got a tiny little fuel tank, a little flat one with the uh, side mounted engines just so we can actually move it around in orbit to its position. So we don't have to worry about having the massive uh, main cell engine on the back because it's not really as sensitive. If we're trying to do delicate orbital maneuvers nearby the main station, we'd ought to be able to firing and spinning around with this giant orange thing on the back. It'd be a bit like trying to park a truck uh, blind without any mirrors in the dark. Well, trying to play chess. That's the analogy for today. It's a pretty poor one, I'll admit. I'm pretty tired. Anyway. Not an analogy, it's, it's a simile. It's a bit like. So yeah, anyway. There we go, we're down to our last orange, and we're probably going to make it. Probably be fine. 
We've got so much thrust from them already, we've got really high speed going. So I think we'll have plenty of fuel left. By plenty of fuel, I don't mean plenty, but we should have a suitable amount left. It's really nice that MechJab can actually do this competently, especially with the new improvements to SAS. I know it takes away some of the actual, like, you know, effort and skill, but then again, after playing Kerbal Space Program for so long, getting to orbit's pretty easy. Um, and if the craft is suitable to get to orbit, MechJab can do it. If MechJab can't do it, you might still be able to do it. But the point is, after doing it so much, you know, it's kind of nice just to sit back, get a cup of tea, read a book while the thing launches into orbit. Anyway, moving swiftly on, we have lost the orange tank. We are doing our close approach. We are half an orbit away, just doing some slight adjustments. And you can see that the point is vibrating somewhat. I have no idea why that happens. Why the point recalculates every couple of seconds to be like a completely different place. Might be need to fire upwards or downwards or whatever. I would say upwards or downwards. What is it? Normal? Normal plus normal minus? That's it. At normals to the... Normal. Uh, anyway, I suck at explaining things. So basically, this is going to be the stop-off point and the beginning of where we're going to basically house a couple of things of our space fleet before they go, you know properly into, into interplanetary space. We also might go and set up one at the moon. Maybe set up a moon base to drill for Keythane or something so we can actually get fuel going. Maybe we do that after we've got a couple of... I'm thinking a couple of ships first. So yeah, we've docked that on. And things are starting to wobble. Uh -huh. Aha. Oh, well that, that, that's not looking good. Uh, it's wobbling a lot. Um, And the wobbling is getting worse. Oh, that doesn't look good. Ooh. Uh, all right, if we turn off the... Yeah, for some reason if MechJub is on, it makes the whole thing shake apart. I don't think MechJub fully synergizes with the new changes to the SAS. Okay, so we do... Wait, what's that? There we go. What's that off to the side there? Uh-oh. It's a Nat space plane. That's not good. Um, yep, they've also got some sort of unmanned fighter. Not really a fighter, it's more a torpedo it looks like. It looks like they don't want us getting a uh, foothold in space. Uh, right, let's use the Gatling cannons. We don't really need to launch the fighters, they're a bit close and the Gatling Cannon is perfectly good for close engagements. So just turn it round. There we go. See what I mean about the Napal being useful? Just aim it. Ugh. Why? Coming really hard to aim. Uh, oh, oh crap! <laughs> yeah, now we can't use Mech Jeb to compensate for our movement. Uh, yeah, we're we the recoil has made the station the station spin pretty badly. Oh, we hit something. Although I think that was the space plane. Yep, their space plane is now lacking a wing. Uh oh. Right. Well, they're firing on us. Oh, it looked like a miss. That looked like it went straight through us. That was a miss. Then he got one last one at... Ooh. Oh, that looked... Yep, they've they've knocked off the habitation module. Ah. Right, well... Let's use the turret. Um, right, we're going to have to try and make sure we hit with our first shot. It is pretty close. And they've got no... Uh, 
missiles left. So what they'll be doing is they'll have probably coming in for a ramming action. And the amount of mass that's on that thing, the amount of speed it can get up to, because it looks like it's using an arrow spike. Yeah, it can do some damage. So we're going to have to hit it with the Gatling Cannon. First time around, because if we miss, we're probably going to go spinning again. Even more so now, we don't even have the mass on the other side to compensate. And slower movement, so we're going to go instantly into a little spin. We, uh, be not, not great, I'll be honest. Um, makes it rather tricky to aim when you're kind of on the wrong side of the station and spinning. Trying to get access to the probe core here. The distance is being closed. Uh, screw it, I don't think of time. Just going to have to fire. Um, about there. Yes! What a shot! First time. The first time on my second attempt using the turret. But anyway, I think that we can call that a success. So, uh, apart from the fact we now have no habitation module or fuel up there, we have a military station. Um, I guess it's still got guns and stuff. And the fighters. It's still got docking ports on it. It's fine, we can just tack more stuff on, and then in future... It'll be fine. We just gotta rebuild it. Anyway, I've been Enter Elysium. I'm sorry this has been a short episode. There were some problems with the crashing and the stuff and all the things. Anyway, so we now have a military space station, sort of, mostly. Um I've been Enter Elysium and stay shiny everybody.